This video will show how to depth register raster or bitmap logs and other imagery within RockWorks such that these pictures can be included within 2D and 3D strip logs. We'll start by launching RockWorks and activating the Borehole Manager. In order to add a raster image or bitmap, the location data for the associated borehole must already exist. In this example, we'll pick the vertical DH07 log from within the sample data set that comes with RockWorks. I picked a vertical borehole because the 2D and 3D display programs within RockWorks cannot handle raster images for deviated boreholes. Next, we click on the bitmaps button and we'll see the bitmap table, which in this case is empty. Don't worry about the first four columns labeled depth to top, depth to base, header base, and footer top. These settings are set automatically within the next few steps. Instead, focus on the column labeled file name. If you double click on this field, an image selection dialog box will appear. Notice that we're seeing all of the raster images within the current project folder. Although you could navigate to another folder to specify an image, we strongly recommend that you keep all project related files, such as borehole related raster images, within the project folder. With this in mind, we'll select, by double clicking, this image titled DH07 Scanned Paper Log.png. This image will now be displayed within a new dialog that we call the Raster Log Calibrator. Notice the prompt at the top of the screen that tells us to click on point at top of log. We do this by scrolling to a point within the image where we know the depth. In this example, we'll scroll to a portion of the log that shows zero depth. To be as accurate as possible, we can increase the image size by adjusting the image size setting located at the base of the raster log calibrator dialog. Next, we move the cursor to a point that represents the top of the log and click the mouse button. A gray polygon will now appear asking us to enter the depth represented by the point that was just clicked on. In this case, that's zero, so we'll just click the OK button. The program will now draw a thick red horizontal line at that depth. Notice that the prompt at the top of the raster log calibrator is now asking us to click on a point at the base of the log. Scroll down to the base of the log and click on a point where the depth is known. Again, the gray polygon appears at which point we should type in the depth represented by this point and press the OK button. We'll now be presented with a small dialog box that gives us some log clipping options. Let's ignore this for now by selecting No Clipping, meaning that the entire raster image will be used within subsequent operations such as 2D and 3D strip log plotting. I'll return to these options later on within this video. We'll now see that the program has computed the depth represented by the top of the raster image. Since we left the title and footer block intact by selecting the no clipping option, the program shows the top of the image at a depth of minus 118, or 118 depth units above the ground surface, while the depth at the base of the raster image is 59 depth units below the base of the borehole. The header base and footer top pixels are used internally by the program and there's no need to adjust them. At this point, we're ready to do something with this raster image. Click on the Strip Logs menu and select the Single Log 2D option. Next, click on the 2D Strip Log Designer tab within the 2D Strip Log menu. For this example, we'll activate the Depths, Lithology, and Bitmap options. Press the Process button and we'll see the raster image plotted in conjunction with the other selected items being the depth bar and lithology column. Notice how the raster image is plotted such that the title block is positioned above the top of the log while the footer is plotted below the base. Everything plotted exactly where it should be based on the two calibration points that we identified within the raster log calibrator. These raster logs can also be included within cross sections and 3D diagrams. Now, Let's revisit the clipping. I'll return 
to the bitmaps table and double click on the file name. I'll say OK within the image selection dialog in order to proceed to the raster log calibrator using the previously defined DH07 scanned paper log.png image. I'll repeat the process of identifying the depth at the top and the depth at the base of the log, but this time I'll select the log clipping option titled Clip Based on Calibration Points. Now, if I return to the Strip Logs Single Log 2D program and replot this log, I won't see the header or the footer portions of the raster image. If you're concerned that you've permanently lost data by clipping the raster image, don't worry. The program doesn't modify the original bitmap, it just modifies how it's displayed. Now let's have a look at how this process can be used to display a small subset of a raster image, specifically the region from 90 to 120 depth units. As before, we select the Clip Based on Calibration Points option and return to the Strip Logs Single Log 2D program to replot the log. Notice that we're now only seeing the selected region. Again, don't worry about ruining your original image. It's still intact. We're just showing the selected region. By the way, don't forget that you can always adjust the width of the raster bitmap by selecting the 2D Strip Log Designer tab and changing the bitmap width. In this example, I'll change it from 8 to 4 and reprocess the log. Now let's address multiple raster images for the same borehole. I've loaded a series of disparate images into the bitmap table for log DH08. This log includes pictures of core, cuttings, a piper diagram, a stereonet, and even a picture of the drillers at a depth of 195 units attempting to wrestle the pipe out of the hole. Well that's it for depth registering raster images within logs. As you can see, it's a very easy yet flexible process. Thanks for watching.